week you tweeted that Osama bin Laden is still alive. I didn't tweet it. It was a retweet, which is short for a really smart tweet. Okay, but you, you can't just do things like that. You're not just someone's crazy uncle. Really? You know? Because this conversation we're having right now is a preview of Thanksgiving dinner at a lot of American households. So crazy uncles, stand back and stand by. That is Alec Baldwin back as President Trump and Kate McKinnon playing our own Savannah Guthrie on a new episode of Saturday Night Live. Issa Rae hosted the show last night with musical guest Justin Bieber. 45 years ago this month, a new era of American comedy began with the words, live from New York, it's Saturday night. Chevy Chase, John Belushi, Dan Aykroyd, and Gilda Radner were among the not ready for primetime players who started the revolution with a 30-year-old producer named Lorne Michaels calling the shots. The show quickly became a cradle of stars and an appointment for the country every Saturday night at 11.30. SNL's new 46th season comes in the middle of both an intense presidential election and a pandemic. Lorne and I got together for a socially distanced Sunday sit-down inside the famed Studio 8H as SNL scrambled to put on the show during another hectic week. In a time when almost everything seems out of place, and the only prescription is more cowbell, Saturday Night Live is right where it belongs. For 45 years, the groundbreaking sketch comedy show and its star studded casts have closed out the week on a funny note. And you're an idiot. <laughs> Making us laugh at the world. It worked! Its leaders, strategic, and even at ourselves. Norman Rockwell painting, come to life, Willie guys. <laughs> Good morning, guys. At the center of it all is SNL creator and executive producer, Lorne Michaels. And live from Zoom, it's sometime between March and August. After wrapping last season remotely, Michaels began planning the show's return to the iconic Studio 8H. Say what you will about 2020, but uh, it's got moves. Was there ever any chance, Lauren, that you wouldn't start this season back in this studio? I think it was all I talked about all summer and uh, leading up to it was I, I need an audience. Because we're taking big swings and they're hard jokes, when you don't hear any sound, it throws the timing off and the thing that the audience does is it it's the plug that makes the circuit work i think he said i'm not sure if we're going to be able to pull this off we did right? yeah we did it not, feel good not not <laughs> my curse is that i mostly see the mistakes and then six or seven hours after the show goes off i start to realize yeah it wasn't bad big government doesn't muzzle us with masks but just 48 hours later michaels and his staff already were looking ahead to the next show and testing new material at a socially distanced and masked up table read. Wearing a suit, tails, carrying a big baton. The read through we're doing now starts there and goes all the way to there with everybody at a table six feet apart and microphones. It's an honest room. It's now just a much bigger honest room. What are the challenges of coming back into this space under these circumstances? First and foremost is just the protocols. I was tested again as is everybody every day. Uh, you wear your mask all the time. The cast wear them up until the red light goes on and take them off. The audience is in masks. President Trump, two minutes. I'm gonna do 10. Even before the pandemic hit, Michaels was anticipating a busy 2020. Let's do this. I'm holding my bladder, let's get at her. We had that debate and then on Thursday night, Friday, when uh, the president tested positive, uh, it all changed, and it was being rewritten. The script changes had gotten into the control room, not to the cards. And so they just sort of rolled with it. I imagine your writers, after four years of this, have a little bit gotten used to it, knowing that what you go in at the table read at Wednesday oh, is yeah, probably no, no. going to change. And, and, and most often, we don't even attempt it till Friday. We, we've been doing the debates or, or anything political Friday night. Fortunately, the cast... Uh, are good at it and can, can adapt.
Saturday Night Live has been adapting to the news and to the times ever since the Canadian-born Michaels pitched a fresh, provocative comedy show to NBC executives back when Gerald Ford was in office. Ford popularity is certainly on a sharp rise here. October 11th, 1975. 45th anniversary of the first show. Yeah. When I say that to you, sitting here still 45 uh -huh. years later, what do you think? Well, I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> uh, it just worked out that way. So if you think about 1975, it's a tumultuous time in the yeah. country, obviously. So what was sort of the ethos of the show when you started it? And do you still see it out on these stages today? What had happened then was most of the established institutions had been discredited. And that change led to people not knowing where or how to trust. So it was more important to try and be an honest voice. Our job is mostly to entertain, but to do it with a level of intelligence, but still has to make you laugh. And your mind likes trickle, your mind likes trickle. <laughs> I think if you start to think that you're doing important work, not a good sign. It's, it's an early warning that you're about to be accepting a lot of degrees and, and lecturing people. Well, I thought it was breathtaking. Garth sucks. But SNL has been an important touchstone for the country during difficult days, like the ones we're living through today. So, Lauren, I'm interested in asking you about sort of SNL at these times of tragedy. Uh-huh. You know, 9-11, who could forget yep. the show where you stood there with Rudy yeah. Giuliani. Can we be funny? <laughs> Why start now? How do you view the role of SNL in these moments where people are grieving and people are in pain? If you have an audience, you build up and earn trust. They know you're going to deliver. I know you're not terribly haughty about your show, but yeah. do you think it's important for SNL to be here for people in these times yeah, when they're I not do. feeling great? I do, and, and not in any grand way. I just think it's our job, and that's what we do. What's the most important timing? <laughs> After nearly a half century of running the show, he turned into an American icon. Lorne Michaels is beginning to consider life after Saturday night. Do you see a day, Lauren, anywhere on the horizon where you're not sitting on that office anymore? My plan is to be here for the 50th. And by that point, I really deserve to uh, wander off. That gives him another five seasons. Saturday Night Live is in the middle of a run of five consecutive live in-person shows leading up to Election Day. That is something it has never done in those 45 years on the air. Don't forget to subscribe to the Sunday Sit Down podcast to hear the full length interview with Lauren Michaels. You can find it on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get yours.